Grace and peace to you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Friends, my name is Mi Rang Beck. I am senior pastor here at Kinto Park United Methodist Church. We welcome all of you worshiping with us on YouTube and Facebook today. I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page, and follow us on Instagram. And please visit our website, www.gintoparkumc.org. And please share your joys and concerns. Comment down below. We want to pray with you and celebrate with you. Also, please give your tithes and offerings through our website, gintoparkumc.org. Today, we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent. Christmas is right at the corner. Let us center and prepare ourselves for worship on fourth Sunday of Advent. Please join me for a call to worship. God has done great things for us. God's love is heralded in the promise of Christ. Holy is God's name. God's promises are fulfilled in the coming of Christ. God's mercy extends from generation to generation. God's salvation is offered in the gift of Christ. Amen. With a woman on a donkey on the way 
friends, I invite you to、um, share your joys and concerns. Comment down below. Let us pray. Lord, we can't imagine what it must have been like for prophets, shepherds, and Mary and Joseph to hear God's request and to respond unconditionally with yes. We have a tendency to put conditions on everything. We want to know what we have to do, how long this will take, what's in it for us, what are the projected outcomes. Forgive us for you, for our faithfulness, Lord. Slow us down and seize us to take time to really consider the wonderful ways you have always worked in our lives. As we have come before you with concerns on our hearts for our families, friends, and world, remind us that your presence is with us and your healing love comforts and restores us. Open our hearts and our ears to the cries of those in need. Let us use our talents and resources to help others. Give us courage. Energy and enthusiasm as we work for you in this world, God of love, fill us with your Spirit when we continue to pray as Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. It's dark. The world lies in sin and error, pining. The shadows are conspiring, but a light is coming. The Lord has been quiet for four centuries. The prophets are gone. There are no signs to see. It's silent, but let me tell you something. A voice. Is coming. The patriarchs are long dead. The judges were traded for a bunch of crowned heads. This monarchy, though consistently failed and misled, no system is working. But there's a new king coming. Man's dead in religion. Legalism reigns. Ceremonial acts, which are just simply profane, the law is not working. But a new covenant is coming. The people are defiling. The rituals God is despising. Even the priests are compromising. And the sin offerings, they're worthless sacrificing. Oh, but get ready because a lamb is coming. The temple is a den of thieves. A brood of vipers are the Pharisees. Same too for the Sadducees. They don't even know there's a new high priest coming. The nations are suffering. Evil is chuckling, and the faithful are left wondering: Does God even care? Oh, let me tell you something. Emmanuel is coming. God's people desire a glorious King. The world is yearning for eternity, a perfect sacrifice each soul desperately needs. It's a silent night, but hope is in sight. A most precious gift God is bestowing. The Bethlehem star begins glowing. Let the good news start growing. A baby is coming. 
The Old Testament lesson this morning comes from Micah 5, 2 through 5a. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are the one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel lesson comes from Luke 1, 47 through 55. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me and his holy name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength from his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Loving friends in Christ, here's your story. Three sons left home, went out uh, in their own, and prospered. Getting together for Christmas, they discussed the gifts they were able to give uh, their elderly mother. The first said, I built a big, huge house for our mother. The second said, I sent her a Mercedes Benz. The third smiled and said, I've got you both this time. Do you remember how, ma how mom enjoyed reading the Bible? And you know, she can't see very well these days because of her eyes. So I sent her a remarkable parrot that recites the entire Bible. It took elders uh, in the church 12 years to teach him. He is one of a kind. Mom just has to name the book in the Bible and chapter and verse, and the parrot recites it. Soon thereafter, mom sent out her letters to thanks to her sons. Dear Milton, she wrote one son, the house you built is too big, too huge. I live in only one room, but I have to keep the whole house clean. Dear John, she wrote to another, I am too old to travel. I stay at home most of the time. So I rarely use the Mercedes Benz you sent, you got me. Dearest son, John, she wrote to her third son. You have the good sense to know what your mother likes. The chicken was so delicious. We usually give the gift with the best thought of the recipient. However, sometimes we miss it and give a wrong, wrong gift or not relevant gift that ends up as a white elephant gift uh, eventually on other occasions. If our greatest need had been information, God would have sent us an educator. If our greatest need had been technology, God would have sent us a scientist. If our greatest need had been money, God would have sent us an economist. If we, if our greatest need had been a pleasure, God would have sent us an entertainer. But our greatest need was forgiveness, hope, and peace. 
So God sent us a Savior, the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. The meeting of these two women in today's scripture, Elizabeth and Mary, is more than a meeting to speak to each other about babies kicking and moving around. It's, it's more than a meeting to discuss the issue of pregnancy. It is an amazing, prophetic, Holy Spirit-empowered declaration that Jesus is the Messiah. Not only do we see Mary and Elizabeth coming together for fellowship and comfort, but we see our Lord Jesus and John the Baptist meeting for the first time even before they were born. These two women's pregnancies are genuinely combined. Luke introduces Elizabeth in chapter 1 verses 5 through 7. The husband of Elizabeth is Zechariah, who belongs to the priestly division of um, Abijah. Elizabeth is also a descendant of Aaron. The both were born and grew up in a very influential and remarkable family. Elizabeth and Zechariah were upright in the sight of God. They both were faithful to God. However, the Gospel of Luke addresses they had no children because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both well along in years. Today, it is not re reasonable that Elizabeth alone is called barren. It refers to the fact that people at that time recognized and treated women not as human beings bearing the image of God, but as tools to produce a baby. However, God calls Elizabeth, a woman called barren, for God's will to save all people, to prepare the way of the Lord Christ. The world was ridiculed her barren and incapable. However, God looks at her fertile heart and faith and uses her to prepare the way of the coming Savior. Then now let's see the pregnancy of Mary. While Elizabeth had not been pregnant in many years in her marriage, Mary became pregnant before married, before married to Joseph, her fiancé. However, Mary's pregnancy is not performed by her choice or will, but by God's will, like Elizabeth's pregnancy. When the angel informs Mary about God's plan for her, she replies, How will this be since I am a virgin? Again, in the time when Mary lived, the reality never supported women pregnant before marriage. Mary's pregnancy could bring herself and her fiancé Joseph to break the engagement. Mary might be called unfaithful, as Elizabeth um, had been called barren. But God calls Mary for the God's will. She commits herself to God. Although she is sincere, faithful, and ready in the sight of God, the world might blame Mary unfaithful by the standards of nearly everyone at that time. In, the, in this meeting of Mary and Elizabeth, or as it's been called by the church throughout, um, the, throughout the centuries, the visitation, we see the meeting of the Old Testament or Old Covenant with the New Covenant. In this God-ordained meeting filled with the Holy Spirit, we learn that what the persons Jesus and John were outside the mother's womb, they were already inside the womb. Jesus was God-man in Mary's womb, as John was forerunner of Messiah in Elizabeth's womb. When the Holy Spirit caused Mary to be pregnant, she was not pregnant with anything less than the Son of God. 
When the Holy Spirit helped Elizabeth to be pregnant, she was not pregnant with anything less than the first prophet after the 40 years of God's silence. The baby inside was the same as the baby outside. The same message can be applied to us. Bible says that we are fearful, fearfully and wonderfully made by God in the image and likeness of God. God's plan for us from the beginning is to prosper us and not to harm us and to give us hope and future. Through Christ, the child soon to be born, we are reclaiming who we are and whose we are, regardless of what we are going through right now. We are valuable and we have hope in Christ Jesus. So, chin up, stand up, and stand tall, and be ready to seize the moment of grace and mercy in Christ. The time is coming. We did not read the whole chapter, but the other thing that, uh, to notice here in the Gospel according to Luke chapter 1 is the way the baby in Elizabeth's womb responds to Mary, who is carrying the Son of God. Verse 41 says, When Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped um, in her womb. Then the verse 44, Elizabeth says, uh, Behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in the womb leaped for joy. Elizabeth said this because she is filled with the Holy Spirit according to verses 41 to 40, 42. In other words, the Holy Spirit prompts her to say that this lip of the baby in her womb is a lip of joy, a lip of Holy Spirit-inspired joy. This joy is contagious and makes Mary compose a song and sing the Magnificat. We read today. Friends in Christ, people called Elizabeth barren, incapable, and Mary was facing the reality that called her unfaithful. However, Elizabeth and Mary never stopped there. They both were they both went forward together to accomplish God's will imprinted in their hearts. It means that they rejected worldly languages intended to overshadow their hearts and minds. They proclaimed with confidence that they are not barren or incapable or unfaithful. Notably, in the text of Luke today, the Magnificat, the Song of Mary, Mary fully trusts in God even though she is facing the unknown future as a pregnant woman before marriage. I hope that all of us may sense confidence, joy, and love filled in the song of Mary. Mary praises God from the bottom of her heart. Her song proclaims that God is the life changer. The life changer is the name of Jesus we, can, we may call. It is the genuine reality that we should see for this season. Elizabeth and Mary's pregnancy story reminds us that God does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance and human conditions, but God looks at our faithfulness and heart in our center. Today, we celebrate the last Sunday of Advent. Christmas is right at the corner. I hope and pray that all of us are ready for Christmas in the sight of God. Our Advent season is soon to be done. Hope, I hope, um, hope has become peace. Peace has become joy, and joy has become love in this day. Love is God the Christ, the Emmanuel, the Holy Infant, the Reconciler, the, the Peacemaker, and the Life Changer. Friends in Christ, who is coming? Who is now on the way? 
we know very well how the story of Mary ends in Gospel of Luke. We know that Mary and Joseph arrive in Bethlehem. We know that we will find the we know that they will find a place to stay, but the lowest place in the world. We know when Mary will give birth to the baby. We know that the baby will be in a manger, and we know the shepherds will come to honor the baby Jesus. Our waiting period of Jesus Christ is ending. The reality that we will see is that the Christ child is waiting for us to come. He is crying out to us from the manger. He is waiting for us to live out our faith. He is waiting for us to seek justice. He is waiting for us to pursue peace. He is waiting for us to love one another and all those in need in the lowest place in this world. Never cease to be amazed at the gift of life, the gift of the child, the Savior. Do you have plans of where and when you will celebrate the birth of, of the baby Jesus this year? I invite all of you and your family to our Christmas Eve candlelight service here in the sanctuary at 5 o'clock on the 24th. Let us all together gather and adore the child, Christ. Christ is waiting for us to come and witness. Therefore, let us go to see him and sing the song of Magnificat together. Let there be at Bethlehem and beyond a joyful and grateful reverence for the gift of the Christ, fully human and fully divine. May Christ be with you this day and always. Merry Christmas.
loving friends, Christmas is right at the corner. Let us rejoice and come and wait for the Christ. Receive the benediction. May the love of God the Creator, God the Redeemer, and God the Sustainer rest upon you and live through you in this period of waiting. Go in peace. Amen.